Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, and today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. An unequal marriage and a crime for millions. People who are madly in love with money but do not know how to earn it themselves can be extremely cunning and dangerous. They easily cross the boundaries of morality, ethics, and law. For them, there are no friends, relatives, or loved ones, and they are capable of any betrayal, even a crime, for money. Such was the case with a seemingly charming and sweet woman named Celeste. The case of Celeste and Stephen Beard in the early 2000s shocked the United States of America and was later widely covered in the media of other countries. The story began in a typical manner. An elderly millionaire decided to marry a young beauty who worked for him as a maid. Friends, relatives, and business partners advised Mr. Beard against this step, but he was blinded by love and genuinely believed that his feelings were mutual. Stephen was the fourth of five legal husbands of this cunning and greedy woman. She never loved him, but only saw him as a source of her own enrichment. In various ways, the wife forced the millionaire to change the conditions of their marriage contract, so that, in case of his death, she would receive as much money and property as possible. To hasten her husband's demise while deflecting suspicion from herself, Celeste used a woman who was in love with her. Early Years of Stephen Beard Stephen Beard was born on August 11, 1924, in Dallas, Texas. He was the only child of a woman named Dolores, but never knew his biological father. He was always very close to his mother, who worked multiple jobs to provide everything necessary for her son. Stephen's childhood and youth coincided with the difficult times of the Great Depression and World War II. After finishing high school, the young man tried for some time to find a job in advertising, but soon realized that without education, it would be very difficult to get a good job, so he studied to become a marketer. However, he did not have time to apply his knowledge in practice, as he went to war, serving in the Navy until 1945. During the war years, Stephen gained an engineering specialty, but despite this, he could not find a decent job in peacetime. He managed to get a position as a sales consultant in a small shoe store in his hometown of Dallas, where he earned a very modest salary, barely enough for the essentials. Nevertheless, Stephen later called that period the happiest in his life because he was young, full of strength, enthusiasm, and faith in a bright future. Most importantly, during his time working in the store, he met the main woman in his life, his wife, Alice Adams. The girl was two years younger than him, possessed striking looks, a slender figure, and was trying to build a career in the modeling business, but abandoned her ambitions to devote herself to her family. The young couple, deeply in love, got married in 1948, just a couple of months after meeting, and a year later, their eldest daughter was born. In 1950, Alice gave her husband a long-awaited son, and three years later, another boy was born. Their family was strong and loving, where everyone cared for and supported each other. From Janitor to Millionaire In the early days of regular electronic television broadcasting, Stephen dreamed of working in the industry, but his path was challenging and filled with obstacles. In the late 1940s, he managed to get a job at one of the studios, but only as a janitor. However, the young man did not give up, continued searching, and soon luck smiled upon him. He was offered a chance to try his hand as a host of an entertainment program on a radio station, and he eagerly accepted the offer. After several years of hard work, Beard became the producer of a popular television program. His income rapidly increased, and he felt right at home in the field of mass communications and information. Stephen became an excellent specialist in advertising and entertainment content promotion, developing new ideas and brilliantly bringing them to life. He worked with many different people, made many useful connections, constantly improved himself, and strove to improve the world. By the mid-1950s, Stephen was successfully engaged not only in advertising and producing TV projects, but also invested the money he earned in real estate and started selling cars. By the age of 40, Stephen had earned his first million dollars and had no plans to stop there. In 1974, at the age of 50, Beard managed to win a tender together with the television company he founded. 
the businessman, along with his wife and three children, moved to Austin, the capital of Texas, where they bought a luxurious mansion with a large pool. Their home was located in one of the most prestigious areas of the city, covering almost 5,000 square meters. The couple joined an elite local club, membership in which cost them over $50,000 a year. But by that time, such an amount was insignificant for them. The Beards achieved incredible heights, raised three children, gave them an excellent education, and now simply enjoyed life. Alice continued to take great care of her appearance, exercised, and despite her age and having three children, maintained a slender figure. Meanwhile, Stephen rapidly gained weight and refused to do anything about it. He joked that his physique matched his social status and income level. All his wife's attempts to get him to exercise and watch his diet were met with promises to consider her advice. By the early 1990s, Beard's fortune had exceeded $10 million. The businessman and his family had virtually everything money could buy. The couple acquired their own yacht, traveled extensively, doted on their grandchildren, and were incredibly happy. It seemed that this happiness would last forever, but suddenly, tragedy struck their home. Illness and Death of Alice Beard In early 1993, Alice sought medical help due to severe migraines that had been constantly tormenting her. A thorough examination revealed a cancerous tumor in her brain. Treatment began immediately. One of the best neurosurgeons operated on Mrs. Beard, and she was prescribed expensive medications that were hard to obtain. Her husband spared no expense on innovative therapy, which offered some hope for recovery. Alice's diagnosis was a shock to the entire family, but they supported her and believed in the best. It seemed that their love, care, and advanced treatment technologies yielded results, and after six months, she went into remission. In August of that year, they went on a cruise to relax, celebrate their 45th wedding anniversary, and the victory over the illness. It was a wonderful, romantic, but unfortunately, their last vacation together. By late September, the insidious disease returned with renewed vigor and began to progress rapidly. Neither the best specialists nor experimental therapy could help Alice. She passed away on October 13, 1993, at the age of 68. For her family, it was an irreparable loss and a pain that nothing could alleviate. Period of Depression and New Love After the passing of his beloved wife, Stephen fell into a deep depression. He lost interest in his business affairs, spent a lot of time at the bar of the upscale country club, sitting alone, drinking heavily, and just passing time to avoid returning to his empty, enormous house. By then, his children had long grown up and moved away, and his grandchildren only visited during holidays, leaving the millionaire in the mansion surrounded only by his numerous housekeepers, cooks, gardeners, and other staff. The man was visibly withering away. As a family man, he desperately needed a kindred spirit, care, and companionship. His relatives and friends were convinced that he needed a woman who would support him and be a source of comfort during such a difficult time. However, Stephen was not ready for a new relationship. At that moment, he couldn't even imagine loving someone else again. In early 1994, Beard met an attractive young woman named Celeste Martinez, who had started working as a waitress at the country club's restaurant a couple of weeks before their first meeting. She was a pretty, smiling blonde, very sociable, and able to attract attention. She was divorced and was fighting her ex-husband for custody of their twin daughters. Celeste was experiencing financial difficulties, had many debts, and told pitiful stories about her tough life. Stephen became a sympathetic listener and quickly grew fond of this girl. He genuinely felt sorry for her, wanted to help her out of her difficult situation, and offered her a job as a maid in his home, which she gladly accepted. Thus began a rather predictable romance between the elderly millionaire and the cunning beauty, who was almost 40 years younger than him. Who is Celeste Beard? Celeste Mary Johnson, maiden name matching her fifth husband's surname, has carried several surnames over time, Bratcher, Wolf, Martinez, Johnson, but became globally notorious under the surname of her fourth husband, Stephen Beard. 
She was born on February 13, 1963, in Culver City, California. Nothing is known about her biological parents, as her mother abandoned her immediately after she was born. At two days old, she was adopted by Nancy and Edwin Johnson. The couple had spent many years unsuccessfully trying to have their own children, but Nancy had repeated miscarriages, which led to a nervous breakdown that later developed into prolonged depression and resulted in a mental disorder. In the late 1950s, the Johnsons adopted two boys. In 1963, they took in Celeste, and a year and a half later, they adopted another girl. Over the years, Nancy's mental condition worsened and became increasingly unstable. The couple frequently argued, and their adopted children were unwilling witnesses to these fights. Nancy sank deeper into depression, repeatedly attempted to end her life, and even wanted to harm the children. Many years later, Celeste recounted that her most frightening childhood memory was bath time when she and her sister were in the bathtub, and their mother suddenly pushed their heads underwater, holding them there for a while before letting go. Nancy claimed she was just rinsing their hair, but the sisters were convinced their mother had tried to drown them, but then reconsidered. After this incident, Nancy was admitted to a psychiatric clinic following another nervous breakdown, leaving Edwin to care for the four children. He tried to be a good father and take care of his charges, but in her teenage years, Celeste openly accused him of constant molestation and abuse which she claimed began when she was only 11. However, her words were hard to trust, as this story repeatedly changed, gained different details, and later, the blonde even alleged that her older brothers also committed acts of intimate violence against her. Pathological Liar Soon the Johnsons separated and began a court battle for custody of their adopted children. Nancy claimed her husband was an alcoholic and accused him of domestic violence. Edwin, on the other hand, argued that the children couldn't be left with their mother because she was dangerous, and due to her mental issues, could harm herself and them at any moment. Celeste didn't want to stay with either of her adoptive parents, but in court, she testified against her father, accusing him of molestation, aggression, assault, and even armed attack. According to her, when she was a child, Edwin struck her in the head with a knife causing her to nearly bleed to death. When asked to show the scar, she initially said it was hidden by her hair, then forgot where exactly she had been hit. Eventually, she claimed the scar had disappeared with age. Celeste constantly fabricated stories about her past, portraying herself as a victim. She understood this was the easiest way to attract attention, elicit pity and sympathy from others, and get what she wanted. During her teenage years, Celeste was extremely temperamental, behaved aggressively and sometimes irrationally, leading her to be taken to a psychiatrist. She was never diagnosed, with the conclusion being that it was just a difficult adolescence compounded by an unhealthy family environment. Celeste went through several more foster families, but never settled anywhere. Thanks to her striking appearance and brazen behavior, Celeste was very popular with the opposite gender from a young age. She often skipped school, preferring to spend time with boys in bars or on the beach, and in high school, she dropped out altogether. Marriage to Craig Bratcher and birth of twins. At 16, Celeste met a young man named Craig Bratcher who was only a year and a half older than her. They quickly started living together, and less than a year later, Celeste became pregnant. In December 1980, the couple had a modest wedding, and soon after, their twin daughters, Jennifer and Christina, were born. The young parents were unprepared for family life, domestic responsibilities, and raising children. They constantly argued, and Celeste didn't want to change her lifestyle. She spent her time in bars and clubs, leaving the children with Craig. She repeatedly accused Craig of domestic violence, assault, and forcing intimacy, trying to portray herself as a victim, secure a divorce, and receive monthly payments from her ex-husband. Celeste again accused her husband of abuse when he caught her in bed with a lover and threatened to end their lives. She managed to get Craig sent to jail for several months, although no one was actually harmed during that incident. The couple divorced in the spring of 1982. Celeste filed for child support, 
and even obtained a restraining order against her ex-husband. However, she continued to regularly leave the children with him so they wouldn't interfere with her social life. New Fleeting Marriages After the divorce, Celeste wandered from one rented room to another, living off alimony and welfare, stubbornly refusing to work. She constantly took men to court, accusing them of harassment and violence, hoping to get some compensation. Celeste had no interest in her children and simply gave them to a foster family to avoid having them interfere with her lifestyle. When her ex-husband found out, he was shocked. He managed to gain custody of the children and took them in. Soon after, Celeste convinced him to try living together again. He agreed, but the reunion was short-lived. A couple of months later, Celeste again accused him of violence and took him to court. Craig even agreed to take a lie detector test, which showed he was telling the truth. After the breakup, the parents split the children. Jennifer stayed with her father, while Christina went with her mother. In 1986, Celeste married for the second time to a serviceman named Harold Wolf. But this marriage didn't last long. Despite Harold treating her and her daughter well, life with the unstable Celeste proved unbearable. She constantly argued, threatened to end her life, and even called Harold superiors, complaining about him, nearly ruining his career. Almost immediately after the divorce, Celeste married again. Her third husband was a wealthy top manager named Jimmy Martinez. The couple bought a spacious house in Austin, but Celeste nearly bankrupted her new husband by spending his money recklessly. When he realized she had drained his accounts and put him in debt, he tried to talk to her, but she cut her wrist with scissors. After that incident, Celeste was sent for mandatory treatment in a psychiatric clinic. The therapy did her some good, and she calmed down a bit, but it didn't save her marriage to Jimmy. She also accused her third husband of domestic violence, but he managed to have all charges dropped. Immediately after that, he filed for divorce. Fraud and Incredible Luck In the early 90s, Celeste faced charges of insurance fraud involving her car, she had burned the vehicle in the desert to collect a large payout, but her scam was soon uncovered. A case was opened, but Celeste got incredibly lucky. At the hearing, she encountered a sympathetic judge who sentenced her to community service and a fine equal to the insurance payout instead of prison time. Celeste needed money, so she got a job for the first time in her life. Thanks to her striking appearance and natural charm, she was hired as a waitress at an exclusive country club, where she soon met a widowed millionaire whom she quickly began to woo. Stephen felt sorry for her and invited her to his home, which was a huge stroke of luck for her. Celeste couldn't cook or do housework, so she did everything she could to make others do these tasks for her. She quickly gained the trust of the elderly man, taking advantage of his kindness and generosity. Soon the millionaire started taking his young companion out, introducing her to his friends and partners. By then, Beard's friends were already worried, seeing how cunning and greedy this woman was. However, the businessman wouldn't listen to anyone because he was simply captivated by the beauty. But Celeste was only interested in his money, and the man himself irritated her. In conversations with her daughter, she called him unflattering names, noting that he was fat, old, and disgusting. But she was willing to endure it for financial gain. Even Celeste's ex-husbands, upon learning what was happening, tried to warn the man about who he was involved with, but he didn't believe them. Beard proposed to her, and she naturally accepted right away. However, the businessman's close friends managed to convince him to at least draw up a prenuptial agreement to retain ownership of his property and control his wife's spending. Family Life and Extravagant Spending on February 18, 1995, the couple officially legalized their relationship. As a wedding gift, Celeste received half a million dollars, had access to her husband's accounts, and was set to inherit a million dollars upon his death. After the wedding, her daughter Christina moved into Beard's luxurious home, and a year later, after their father ended his life, Jennifer also moved in with her mother and stepfather. Celeste treated her husband with contempt, trying her best to undermine his health and hasten his demise. She made it a tradition to drink strong alcohol at dinner, 
adding sleeping pills to Stephen's drinks and food so he would fall asleep, allowing her to go out to entertainment venues. Meanwhile, she constantly thought about how to change the prenuptial agreement to maximize her inheritance after Beard's death. She convinced her husband to sell their house and buy another, arguing that she felt uncomfortable living where Stephen had spent many years with Alice. In reality, the scheming blonde wanted property acquired during the marriage. But this wasn't enough, and she began spending money from her millionaire husband's accounts. In the first month of their married life, Celeste spent over $100,000 on entertainment, shopping, and other personal needs. Her husband was bewildered, as no matter how much money he gave her, it was never enough. Moreover, Celeste stole and pawned jewelry that had belonged to the late Alice. When Stephen found out, he was so furious that he wanted not only to divorce her, but also to send her to jail. However, Celeste begged for forgiveness, telling him about her debts and the need to pay a fine for the insurance fraud case. The man believed her, helped pay off her debts, and decided to keep the marriage. Attempted Murder On October 2, 1999, around 3 in the morning, a frightened man called emergency services, unable to explain what was happening. He said he woke up from a sharp burning pain in his abdomen, saw that his clothes and bed were covered in blood, and his internal organs were literally spilling out, which he was holding in with his hand. The man also said his wife was somewhere in the house, but he couldn't call out to her and was just bleeding out in his bedroom. The caller was Stephen, who truly had no idea what had happened to him, but understood that without immediate help, he would die. Fortunately, within minutes, paramedics and police arrived at the mansion and saw a horrifying scene. An elderly man sat in a chair covered in blood, holding the phone in one hand and trying to stem the blood flow from his abdomen with the other. They asked him if he had recently undergone surgery and if his stitches might have come apart, to which he responded negatively. Soon, Celeste and Christina appeared, seemingly unaware of what was happening but they remained calm upon learning about the incident. They confirmed that Stephen had not undergone any surgeries, and he was taken to the hospital. This is where things got interesting, as it turned out that the businessman had been shot in the stomach while he slept. In his bedroom, police found a shotgun shell on the floor and sealed the room as a crime scene, declaring it an attempted murder. The first suspect was Mrs. Beard, but she claimed she was in another wing of the mansion at the time, and her daughters corroborated her story. Soon it was revealed that during her second stay in a psychiatric hospital, Celeste had met a woman named Tracy Tarleton, who was also a patient. They quickly developed a close relationship, and Celeste hinted that she would leave her husband if it weren't for him being a tyrant. Tracy took these words as a call to action, and decided to remove the obstacle. Investigation, trial, and sentences. Tarleton didn't even try to hide. The shotgun she used was found in her home. Celeste vehemently denied her involvement, claiming that this woman was obsessed with her and acted alone. The accused chose to remain silent. Stephen survived, gradually recovered, and was soon discharged home. However, on January 22, 2000, he suddenly passed away due to a blood clot that had formed after the gunshot wound. Now, Tracy was no longer charged with attempted murder, but with the crime itself. Yet she remained silent until July of that same year, when the newly wealthy widow Celeste married Cole Johnson. Almost immediately after Celeste's fifth marriage, Tracy began testifying against her. She admitted her guilt in Stephen's death but noted that she was driven to such a desperate act by her lover, who had promised they could be together after the man's demise. However, after eliminating her old husband with someone else's hands and inheriting his fortune, Celeste quickly married another man. Celeste denied all accusations against her, but everyone testified against her in court, even her own daughters, who confirmed that their mother never loved her fourth husband and wished him dead to inherit his wealth sooner. Tracy made a deal with the prosecution and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. She was released in August 2011. In the spring of 2003, Celeste Johnson was sentenced to life imprisonment with the possibility of parole no earlier than 40 years. 
It was revealed that she also planned to get rid of Tarleton and was seeking a criminal to silence her lover and avoid punishment. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel. There are many shocking stories ahead of you.